What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to the video tutorial on how to paint the Marvel Crisis Protocol Rivals box set Logan, as well as his motorcycle. I have on screen the colors and materials I used to paint both the figures. So if you want to just pause the video, note those down, and then we can dive right on into the video tutorial itself. So for the prep for Logan, you can see that I've sub-assembled him into a number of components. So I have the figure as well as his motorbike, and I've kept them separate from the base. So the motorbike is going to go on a 40 mil base. I think this is 40, might be a 50, and then Logan on his 32, maybe 40. I actually don't know the base sizes. Keeping them separate allows me to more easily get to the undersides of the figures, and then in particular when it comes to painting the bike, I can get to the undersides of all the metallic elements. And then on the base, I can do all of my dry brushing, I can do all of my freehanding for the walkway patterns without having a miniature on top interfering. Similarly, I can paint the non-metal metal on the base separate. A lot easier to do this in a separate component without a figure on top. The only thing you have to bear in mind when you're painting models in sub-assembly like this is to pay attention to your light sourcing, particularly with a model you want to make sure that you're consistent with your light source. So knowing that Logan, I want the light source facing from his face head on direct, the light will be coming from this direction. So what I want to do is I'll just rotate the base and the figure so that my light source is coming from one of these halves. And I know it's the half based on the footprint and of course the way that he's facing. I'll do the same thing for the base here. I want the bike to be mounted at a somewhat cross angle like this. So my light source will be coming from this direction and like this as well. I know that the bike isn't playable, but my client wants it painted as a cool sort of terrain piece, probably put it on the board as like a size two thing that you can throw around. And honestly, I think it'll be fun to paint if a little bit of a, an interesting challenge. I think it'll be a matter of balancing the amount of like bright chrome non-metal model, like probably for all of the pipes and the tubing and then some of the boxier things and then some of the inset panels behind will just be black with some edge highlighting for chip weathering or something. So what I'll do is I'll prime the model with Vallejo Surface Primer Black. I'll be using my airbrush for this. And in terms of the color scheme, we're going to be following the um, one of the Wolverine films. My client sent me a photo. So basically it's blue jeans, sort of a tan, um, dirty white wife beater. And then the jacket is going to be a dark brown leather. And then we're going to do the orange or the brighter orange banding on the sleeves. I believe it's two or three of them. And then I'll probably do a bright sort of ochre lining for the jacket itself. I'm going to use AK's Dark Sea Blue to start painting the pants. And I'm just going to apply a nice even base coat over all of the pants. From there, my next highlight is Light Prussian Blue. And I'm going to start to apply a bit of a scratchy crosshatch pattern with my highlights to capture a bit of that denim texture. I'm going to take care to leave the darkest recesses and folds in the dark sea blue. My next highlight is aquatic turquoise. And again, continuing that crosshatching scratchy um, textural work to capture the denim texture. My highlights are going to be pure aquatic blue at this stage. Although as I get to my mid and shadow tones, I do mix in a bit of that light Prussian blue to create some smoother transitions. And my final highlight is with blue green, focusing on the most raised parts of the thighs, as well as the folds around his crotch and the belt. You can see the color is just subtly shifting and um, I don't want to go too overboard with this color. I want to make sure that I have a nice pop between the bright, mid and dark tones on the pants. From there, I'm going to use pure dark sea blue and just do a bit of black lining along the seams on the outside and inside of his pants. And then finally with the airbrush, I'm going to do a glaze of a light Prussian blue. You can do this by hand, totally fine. I'm lazy, so I'm using the airbrush. I've got my compressor set to about 10 or 15 PSI, and the paint is diluted like watercolor, five or six parts water to one part paint. And the goal here is to focus on the mid and shadow tones, spraying from underneath 
and this will smooth out those transitions and give me a softer blend. To paint the skin, I'm gonna start with a base coat of AK's Reddish Black. I wanna make sure that I apply a couple of thin layers to get a nice, even base coat. From there, I'll highlight with AK's Base Flush and get a nice, even base coat over all of the skin, leaving the deepest shadows in that burnt red color. From there, I'll start mixing progressive amounts of beige red, working my way up from base flesh. So however many intermediate steps you wanna do, we're working from one color to the next. On areas like the face, you can probably get away with fewer transition highlights, but on areas like the uh, tops of the hands, as well as the chest and neck, you might wanna mix your colors a little bit. From beige red, I'll do the same thing into pastel yellow. Again, I'm starting to focus my brighter highlights on the face. So we're looking at the eyebrows, the tips of the nose, top and bottom of the lip, the forehead, the cheekbones, as well as the chin. From there, I'll use the airbrush and some scarlet red to do a few glazes into the skin. I'm focusing on the deepest shadow areas. Um, this will help to bring a bit of rosiness and warmth back into the skin. To paint the eyes and the mouth, I'm gonna start with a base coat of Tenders Gray to fill in the sockets, being careful not to overpaint into the skin around. I'll go in with some Scale Colors White Sands and I'll pick out the teeth as well as the whites of the eyes, making sure to leave some of the Tenders Gray existing as a black line. When you're painting the eye, there's a couple of techniques you can use. You can either do a white dot and then a black dot with tenebrous gray, or in this case, I'm just doing two white dots with the white sands. Paint the hair, I'm gonna start with a base coat of tenebrous gray, making sure to get the sideburns and the back of the neck and not overpaint onto the skin. My next highlight will be a 50-50 mix of Tenvis Gray and Leather Brown. And I'm focusing on broad shapes at this point. I'm not really looking at highlighting individual strands. I'll continue highlighting with Leather Brown. And from this point on, as we work our way up into the brighter highlights, we can start to focus on the detail of the strands to pick out some of that, um, the finer the hair work. My next highlight is a mix of leather brown, light earth, and a touch of number six earth yellow to bring back a bit of that blonde warmth to the color. You can see that I'm focusing this on the sideburns, on the corners of the hair where it flares out like ears, as well as the front. The base coat of the shirt, I'm using AK's medium sea gray. You'll want to thin your color and apply a couple of thin coats to get a nice even coverage without any chalkiness. Be careful not to overpaint onto the skin. I'll use warm gray to highlight the shirt. Again, keeping it nice and diluted. I'm introducing a bit of texturing. I imagine it's like a, a wife beater with sort of a very um, rough visible texture to it. So I'm not aiming for perfect smooth blends here. From warm gray, I'll start to mix in progressive amounts of pale sands to create my highlights. The goal here is to work up to pure pale sands. And as I get brighter and brighter, I'm focusing more on the top of the chest. You can also see that I'm starting to define that edge along the collar, leaving more of that warm gray showing through in the recess. And here we're just finalizing with some highlights of pure pale sands. And being very neat along the edge where the collar meets the skin. And then I'll use pure white for my final highlights on the shirt. I'm gonna pick out the most prominent folds on the top of the chest and then introduce a couple of more pronounced highlights or some micro folds and uh, bends in the shirt as well. To 
to paint the jacket, I'm gonna start with a base coat of black red. And I wanna be careful not to overpaint onto the white shirt or the blue of the pants. From there, I'll do a 50-50 mix of French brown and black red, and I'll work my way to pure French brown. My next highlight will be pure number six earth yellow. And for this, I'm concentrating only on the um, inner part of the jacket where it's flipped around the collar. You can see here that I'm using a dot or stippling motion or pattern with the brush instead of cross hatch brush strokes to simulate the fur. I'll then highlight with Sahara yellow, continuing that dot stippling motion. And then finally, I'm gonna go back in with my airbrush, a 50-50 mix of the black, red, and the tenebrous gray, and I'll do my glazes into the jacket to deepen the color and um, darken the shadows. Much like with the pants, you can do this glazing by hand, but I'm lazy and I like using the airbrush for this because it's quick and consistent, so um, whichever way works for you. With the airbrush, you wanna be careful because you don't have that control that you do with the brush. You wanna make sure you're not overspraying onto the pants or the shirt or the skin. And then to paint the striping on the jacket, I'm using base flesh diluted and we'll paint the three stripes equidistant on each of the sleeves. To paint the non metal gold on the buckle, I'll be using Vallejo's Burnt Umber, English Uniform, Japanese Uniform World War II, and some Ice Yellow, and I'll just be wet blending right on the figure. So I'm gonna start with a base coat of the Burnt Umber. I just wanna make sure I apply a nice even base coat over all of the buckle. And while it's still wet, you can see I'm gonna to start to introduce the English Uniform, focusing on um, highlighting the top of the buckle. And then the Japanese uniform. Again, the paint is still wet, so we're just doing a quick and dirty wet blend. The buckle is small enough that with a bit of a stippling brush motion, you can very easily blend the colors together. The next is a mix of some ice yellow into the Japanese uniform. Again, stippling and wet blending. And then I'll finish off with some pure ice yellow for my brightest highlights on the top of the buckle as well as some specular highlighting on the bottom edge. I'll do the same quick and dirty wet blending for the claws as well, using dark sea blue, gray blue, spectrum blue, and greenish white. So I'm gonna start with a um, Spectrum blue, gray blue highlight on the claw. I'll quickly blend into the dark sea blue at the very, very bottom. Before going back in with some of that spectrum blue and gray blue, and then finishing off with some greenish white on the very edges of the tips. Again, the paint is all wet when I'm doing this, so I'm just going back and forth wet blending the colors together, and then I'll finish off with an edge highlight of greenish white. Paint the shoes, I'm just gonna use ash gray and apply a quick and dirty edge highlight. We're going for some fairly shiny leather and we're also gonna have weathering powders eventually that will cover this. So I'm not gonna to waste too much time doing perfect blends because you really won't see it in the final piece. To paint the copper on the base, I'm gonna start with a base coat of African Shadow. And then from there, a highlight of Saddle Brown and be careful not to get the paint into the lettering. I'll use deep brown to provide my next highlight. Again, making sure not to get the color into the lettering and focusing more and more on the bright spots. From deep brown, I'm gonna start mixing in progressive amounts of pale yellow to form my highlights. When I get to about a 50-50 mix, I'll then use that to apply a edge highlight to all of the edges, as well as along the edges of the lettering. You can see that I've also created some uh, surface texture by adding some scratches and some chipping onto some of the surface flat areas of the copper. 
And then finally, I'll go back in with pure pale yellow and um, apply some final scratches and my brightest edge highlights on the edges and corners that are most directly facing my light source. I'm gonna finish off the entire model with an airbrush nuance of Drucci Violet. I'm focusing this on the shadow tones, primarily on the blue jeans, as well as the brown jacket. I'll get a bit on the skin and the hair, not a problem. I wanna definitely avoid getting this onto the white shirt though. And you can see that the color is thin enough that, again, you can do this glaze by hand. I like using the airbrush because it's um, nice, smooth, and quick. And the goal is just to build up progressive layers of color to work in that violet glaze. For the black armor, I'm gonna start with a dry brush of rubber black on the bike, going quick and dirty. I'll do the same thing with ash gray. And I'm using a makeup brush with soft, short bristles for this to get a softer, smoother dry brush. From there, I'll go in with graphite. I'm gonna use some pluck foam to first apply some chip weathering before going back in by hand, edge highlighting all the black armor, and then manually hand painting some larger chips and scratches. I'm gonna use ash gray to base coat all of the non-metal metal chrome elements on the bike. So we're looking at the uh, flat parts of the engine as well as all of the tubing of the exhaust. From there, I'll apply my first highlight of graphite. I'm not gonna work too hard on blending these colors together. I want a super shiny reflective chrome. And I think especially on the tubing, getting those band highlights for chrome, super simple and very effective at selling the reflectivity of the material. This is also where you do wanna spend the most time on the bike because this is the most prominent part of the model. My next highlight on the chrome will be with pale gray. Again, no mixing. I dilute the colors a little bit so they're easier to pull out and easier to feather, but I'm mainly focusing on getting those um, sharp bands of highlight and then contrast with my bright brights and my dark darks side by side. My next highlight will be pale sand. From here, I'm starting to focus on the most raised parts of the chrome, areas where I want the metal to be hyper-reflective and really bright. You wanna try and not go too overboard with your hots at this stage. If you do it all over the chrome, you lose that sort of um, reflective quality of the metal. You wanna make sure that you do have um, areas of really bright brights, then some mid-tones, and then especially deep darks right beside your brightest points. I'll use greenish white and apply some really sharp highlights on the chrome. Again, focusing on um, large bandings, especially on the exhaust parts. And then where I can, I introduce some sharp reflections in the chrome as well. You can see here on the bottom of the tubing, I'm just adding a bit of reflection from the ground, bouncing into the bottom of the exhaust. Paint the headlight, I'm gonna use a base coat of light Prussian blue. Being very careful not to get any of this onto the um, chrome edge of the lamp. And then while the paint is still wet, I'm gonna wet blend through Ducat blue. I'm going to focus on a very rough blend to form the basic um, undertone. And then from there, we'll add a few dots for um, pseudo specular highlighting. You can see here, I'm adding a broader specular highlight on the top of the headlight with a couple of um, brighter points underneath. And then I'll do the same thing while the paint is still wet. I'll mix in some pastel blue into my Ticot blue, and I'll continue to brighten up those specular highlights, adding a, a nice sharp edge highlight as well around the top curve of the headlamp. And then I'll finish off with a pure highlight of diluted pastel blue to get the brightest specular points. To paint the red brake lights, I'm gonna start with a base coat of black red. 
Again, making sure not to overpaint onto the chrome edges. And then while the paint is still wet, I'll just wet blend into some blood red. Very quick on the side lights, but a little bit more blending on the uh, larger center brake light. To paint the leather, I'm gonna be using black red and French brown with some tenuous gray to darken the seat. This is effectively the same recipe as uh, Logan's jacket, just applied to the leather of the bike. I'm gonna use some US olive drab and I'll apply a base coat onto the rucksack. And then to highlight, I'll use AK's brownish green and just um, I'll apply a highlight to the large banding of the rucksack. And then finally, to add a bit of detail into the base, I'm taking some printed posters and newspapers and I'm applying them first dry fitting. You can see here that I'm just crumpling and forming and shaping the poster, using the bike to dry fit where I want the poster to sit and then where it may touch the wheel or the kickstand, I'll add some folds and cracks and creases into the paper. Once I'm relatively happy with the shape and the position of the paper, I'll apply some Mod Podge to the back to first affix the um, poster initially to the base before then going in and fine tuning the final creases and cracks. And then once I'm happy with the overall placement and shape, I'll apply a final layer of Mod Podge to help seal and protect the paper. Here once again, dry fitting with the base and then just tweaking the creases and folds. And then that final layer of Mod Podge to help seal and protect the paper from the weathering powders, the mineral spirits that we're gonna to use to seal it, as well as the varnish that we're going to apply at the very end. So I'm gonna use some panel liner um, and some enamels to help add a bit of extra detail to the bike. So you want to make sure that you're using a synthetic brush for this and mineral spirits to clean and dilute. All I'm really doing is just adding a bit of color and visual interest to the black and the silver elements to help break up some of the detailing and give the bike a little bit more color and visual interest. For the rust streaks, I'm focusing this mainly on um, crevices and gaps where dust and grime may collect. I avoid using too much of this color on the chrome elements, especially on the bike chain, because that's usually where um, the metal has a lot of polish, it gets used a lot, and so rust and buildup doesn't really have a chance to accumulate. And that wraps up our Logan model. I used some black to seal up the base trim, some weathering powders were applied to the base, and then I applied a matte varnish over the entire model. The model is a gaming piece, and so we want to make sure that we're protecting this model for handling during gameplay. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll make sure to have links in the video description below. And as always, until next time, happy hobbying. And stay tuned next week when I'll have the second video that shows how to paint the rival's saber tooth that goes with this kit.